if if we don't want to use it to solve systems of equations, why do we even care about it then? It turns out that um, Kramer's rule uh, is a formula that has great theoretical benefits, even if practically you don't want to use it for computations. And so I want to show you an example of how one can use uh, Kramer's rule in a theoretical sense. So again, we have an in my n matrix, um, and we're going to define now the adjugate of the matrix. In some linear algebra textbooks, this is called the adjoint of the matrix. Um, but unfortunately, the adjoint can be used to describe other things. Like, for example, sometimes people use the adjoint to describe the trace. So because adjoint is a little bit ambiguous in linear algebra, we're going to choose to use the word adjugate here, which seems like a made up word. Um, I would recommend you not use that in Scrabble unless, of course, your official dictionary for the game is this textbook. Uh, but adjugate does have the advantage that the abbreviation ADJ is is the same whether you use adjoint or adjugate. So it kind of helps clarify the context here. Um, the adjugate of the matrix or the adjoint of the matrix will be the matrix whose entries are cofactors. So the one, one entry is the cofactor one, one. The one, two entry is gonna be the, co the two, one cofactor. And this uh, progresses onward, right? The last entry, the one in entry is the in one cofactor. And so I do want you to notice that this right here is the transpose of the cofactor matrix, that the cofactors will look like they're in the wrong spot right here, that the 1, 2 position has the 2, 1 cofactor, and the 2, 1 position has the 1, 2 cofactor. The reasons for that will be a little bit more, make a little bit more sense in the next. So as an application of Kramer's rule, we can actually compute a formula for the inverse of a matrix. So if A is an n by n matrix, then the then the adjugate has the property that A times the adjugate, well, actually the adjugate comm commutes with the matrix, and this will equal the determinant times the ID. And so in particular, if the determinant is non-zero, it's a non-singular matrix, then you can divide by the determinant, and this gives you a formula for the inverse, because now we found a matrix whose product with A is equal to the identity. If it walks like an inverse and quacks like an inverse, then we have the inverse the inverse matrix right here. The inverse of the uh, of a will be one over the determinant times the adjugate of a. Uh, and so again, this formula, this this equation we saw above, it works even when um, even when the matrix is singular. And so I want to kind of point your attention to a two by two matrix. Take this to be our matrix A, just a generic two by two. So if we go around and start computing the adjugate, the adjugate, the adjugate of A is going to look like the matrix where you're going to get C11, C1, sorry, C21, make sure you do them backwards here, a C12 and C22. All right. So what happens here? is that if you're looking for adjectives, we have to do cofactors, and the one one cofactor means to take away the first row, first column, you're left with just a D. And so I'll record that right here. Um, if you do the if you do the two one cofactor, two one means take away second row, first column, you're left with just a B. But remember the cofactors have signs built into it. Some of them are positive, some are negative. And so you end up with this negative B right here. Um, the next one, the, the, two, the one, two cofactor, take away first column, sorry, first row, second column, you're left with a C, but this likewise will have a negative, this is a negative cofactor, so you end up with a negative C right here. And then finally, if you do the two, two cofactor, second row, second column, you're left with just an A. That one is positive, so you get the matrix A right here. Now it feels like I've seen this before somewhere, right? Don't we know the formula for A inverse for a two by two matrix? You take one over AD minus BC times by this matrix right here, D negative B negative C A right here. Now this number in the bottom, we've mentioned it before. This is none other than the determinant of the matrix A. Uh, this matrix right here is none other than the adjugate of this two by two matrix. And so this inverse formula we had for uh, this inverse form that we have is none other than just this theorem five for the special case of two by two uh, matrices. So what I want to show that this works in general real quick. 
Um, it worked. We, we've been using it for two by two matrices a lot, uh, but we actually could do something like this for even larger matrices as well. And the argument is basically the following. Um, the jth columns of A inverse um, is going to be a, it's going to be a vector X uh, such that, make sure my color's right. A X equals uh, AX equals EJ. And so in this here, X is the Jth column of A inverse. A inverse has the property that A times A inverse gives you the identity. So therefore, if we take the Jth column of A inverse, times it by A will give you the Jth column of the identity. So AX equals uh, EJ right there. Well, if we apply Kramer's rule, so uh, by Kramer's rule, which we saw before, by Kramer's rule, the ith entry of x is given by the following. So xi is given as the determinant of a i evaluated ej over the determinant of a. So we're thinking of this right here, AX equals EJ as a, as a system of equations we have to solve because we don't know rule. We get a formula that looks something like this. But um, if we think of it in terms of cofactor expansions, uh, by cofactor expansion, if we expand across the column of J, uh, of AI EJ here, because uh, we know that the ith column of AI here is gonna look like this vector EJ, if we cofactor expand the ith column, uh, we end up with the following. Let me slide this up a little bit. Uh, we're going to end up with the expression that the determinant, the determinant of a i e j, uh, this is going to equal negative one plus uh, negative one to the i j power times by the determinant of a j i right here. And so basically what happens if you cofactor expand, because uh, again, this a this a i e j, it looks like you have an a1, you have an a2, and then somewhere in the middle you put this e j, continue on. If you cofactor expand across this column right here, since you just have a bunch of zeros and then a one eventually, um, all of the cofactors for these ones are just going to disappear, except for this, the one right here. Um, and we have to pay attention to the sign. And so you're going to get negative one to the I plus J position, because that one right here resides in the I J position. And then if you look at the minor, everything that cancels out, the, the associated minor is going to be the, the A J I minor. Um, because once you take away that ith column, a, I, E, J looks just like the minor will look. And so what you see right here is this negative one to the I plus J power times the determinant of the minor A, J, I. This is just the cofactor of A, although the entries got swapped around. It's a J, I instead of an I, J. And so because of that, we then get that, we then get that X, I right here is equal to CJI. And as this was the ith entry in the column right here, when you put this all back together, we see that uh, the, the IJ entry of A inverse, uh, this is going to equal C on here, C, J, I over the determinant of A, uh, coming back up to this formula right here. And so that verifies the formula we had before. So using Kramer's rule, we're able to compute a formula for the inverse of the matrix, one we've already been using. For two by twos, it's not so bad. Um, I want to show you how this would work for three by threes. This one's a little bit more, more involved. So I have a lot of the details already presented to you on the screen. Suppose we have a three by three matrix A, uh, which is given as 2, 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 4, negative 2. Well, since it's 3 by 3, there are going to be nine cofactors. And to find the adjective, you're going to have to calculate each and every one of them. 
So there's the one one cofactor uh, for which you take away the first column, first row. Uh, sorry, first row, first column. Um, that'll be positive. Uh, by the usual determinant calculation, you're going to get two minus four, which is negative two. Uh, we're going to do the one two cofactor. So we take away the first row, second column. Uh, then you're going to get uh, this two by two determinant. It's going to be negative this time. Uh, you're going to get one times negative two minus one. Uh, that gives you a positive three when you're done. Uh, you then will do the one three cofactor. Uh, then you take one times four plus one. That's going to be a five. And you do this six more times. You get all the different cofactors. The two one cofactor is 14. The two two cofactor is negative seven. 2, 3 will give us negative 7, 3, 1 will give us 4, 3, 2 will give you 1, and the 3, 3 will give you negative 3. So those are all the cofactors. You can double check the details yourself. So with this in mind here, with the co with the adjugate, you're going to take the cofactors, but the transpose of where everything goes. So for example, the 1, 2 cofactor is going to go in the 2, 1 position. And likewise, the 2, 3 cofactor is going to go in the 3, 2 position. Make sure you get those in the right locations. Uh, so we get this. This is our adjugate. There's a lot of work that goes into computing all those cofactors. I don't want to minimize that calculation, but there's these nine co And then once you have this adjugate, we can double check. If we multiply this matrix by, uh, by the original matrix A right there, um, you can double check there. Negative 2 times 2. Uh, that's a that's a negative four. Fourteen times one, that is a fourteen. And four times one, that's positive. The positive four cancels with the negative four, giving us a fourteen right here. Uh, next, if we take this row times the second column, you're going to end up with a negative two minus fourteen. Uh, negative two minus fourteen uh, plus uh, plus sixteen. And so, yeah, 16 minus 14 minus 2, that gives us a 0. Sorry, I kind of stumbled there a little bit. Um, if you take this first row times the third column, you get negative 6 plus 14 uh, minus 8. That gives you 0 again right here. You can go through the arithmetic and see that this matrix, which we computed for the adjugate, multiplies by A to give you 14 down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So this is just 14 times the identity matrix, I3. And so if we divide the adjugate by 14, which 14 is the determinant of this matrix one, uh, we end up with the inverse matrix, uh, which you can see. All right. Um, that is that is a way of computing the inverse matrix. It's a little bit more drawn out than algorithm we've seen in the past because we can take A, augment the identity, and row reduce this. You'll get the identity augment A inverse. Uh, this method, I think, is going to be the more preferred method in general, but be aware that one can use Kramer's rule to calculate inverses of matrices. So while in practice, it's not very practical to solve systems or compute inverses via Kramer's rule, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it. You will be asked to do it in the homework, and you do need to do it that way because those are the instructions. But that's mostly to kind of see the comparison, why this one doesn't work as effectively. Um, the method of row reduction is actually, in general, much more effective, and we've mentioned that already, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of Kramer's rule. You should just use row reduction. It's going to be more effective here. It's only in the case of a 2x2 two two where it's almost the same, even though row reduction still is more efficient. Um, on the other hand, it's the application of Kramer's rule that's really important here, and the application of adjugates in the theory of linear algebra. So, for example, if A were an integer matrix, like you see in this example right here, um, all of its entries are integers, then its determinant is going to be an integer. And all of its cofactors are going to be integers as well. So if A is an integer matrix, I can actually predict, I, I actually know for a fact that its adjugate, which is just a bunch of cofactors, will likewise be an integer matrix as well. Because to compute cofactors, we just have to do multiplication and add and subtract. We never do division when we do cofactor computations. Same thing with the determinant. The determinant is going to be an integer as well. And so no divisions required. Um, what if what what about the the inverse here? There is a bunch of fractions there. That's because I had to divide by the I had to divide by the determinant, which was 14, and some of those numbers were not divisible by 14, um, as you see in terms of the computation. But what if the determinant turned out to be like plus or minus one? 
if the determinant of a was equal to plus or minus one, then when you divide by one, that doesn't do anything. And when you divide by negative one, that just changes the sign. If you knew your determinant was plus or minus one, then any system of equations you solved whose determinant was plus or minus one, um, the solution is gonna be a, an integer vector. And in this situation, if the determinant was plus or minus one, the inverse of that matrix by this formula would also be an integer matrix. So if you were trying to write a homework question where your students had to compute the inverse of a matrix and you wanted the answer to be adorable little integers, you know all you have to do is just start with a matrix whose determinant is plus or minus one. Hum, I wonder if there's a math instructor who's ever used that to create homework questions for his students so they can feel happy when they get whole numbers at the end. Hmm, hum, hmm. I wonder if you looked at some past homework questions, if you computed determinants, would any of those be determinant one or negative one? You'll notice I've actually used those a lot in the homework. Now, that's sort of like a one application of this. That's not how people use it all the time. Uh, but I just want to kind of point out to you that it's the theoretical benefits of Kramer's rule um, that are really why we care about it so much. Uh, this book focuses more on the computational aspects of things, but we should always be aware of those theoretical aspects as well. So I do want you to have some exposure to Kramer's theorem, um, and you'll see this in the homework as well. And so that ends our lecture today. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe so you get updates about future uh, videos, particularly about linear algebra and other projects I'm working on. Um, feel free to like this video. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And other than that, I'll see you next time. Uh, have some fun uh, with Kramer's rule here. I've done my job correctly. You'll hate using it as much as I do. Wink, wink. See you next time. Bye.